Hello and welcome to this introduction into Meta Webinar. Let's start this with some general information about the webinar. The duration of the webinar will be about 55 minutes, with some extra time for questions at the end. Uh, questions are very welcome. Type your questions in the top sidebar and all questions are anonymous. If you use the chat, this will not be anonymous. And a recording of this webinar will be available later on this page. With all of that out of the way, I give over to today's speaker, Christoph. Please go ahead. Hello, my name is Krzysztof Loska. I am a technical product manager in Nordic, and I am responsible for setting a strategy and defining roadmaps for Nordic semiconductor products and technologies intended for smart home and building automation, like among others, Matter, HomeKit, Fred Zigbee or 802.15.4. Today I would like to introduce you to Matter Protocol, one of the hottest topics in smart home today. So first let me start with the project justification. Why is Matter needed or even necessary? Today, the smart home market is very fragmented. It has several negative consequences, which in turn slow down smart home market development. Choosing the right IoT device today can be challenging. Users have to determine if a device they want to buy will work with their ecosystem. Often a smart home device works for one ecosystem, but not for another. This situation causes confusion and frustration for consumers. It also limits consumer choice. To support multiple ecosystems, uh, product developers and manufacturers have to support each ecosystem's protocols. It often means that to create an identical or very similar product working with multiple ecosystems, product developers have to manage multiple different software projects, what highly increases cost and time of development. Finally, regarding retail, multiple variants of the same product intended for different ecosystems occupy shelves and storage space. Matter vision is that smart home connectivity should be simple and reliable. Matter addresses key pain points for interoperability, choice, and ease of use. Matter ensures uh, smart home devices work reliably together, taking guesswork out of the purchasing process and letting consumers choose from a wider range of the brands. Customer can choose which device and ecosystem to connect. This gives choice and control of the experience to the user. Matter enables easier, faster, less costly IoT product development. It helps to keep focus on developing innovative products and accelerating paths to the market. It also helps installers to unlock additional revenue by streamlining training and installation. Matter is the IoT compatibility standard that drives category growth, simplifying the purchasing process expanding the smart home category to more retailers and lowering operational costs. Devices and ecosystems with the matter mark are compatible by design, which reduces returns. Matter members believe that those will be catalysts for increased adoption of IoT and growth across the IoT value chain especially the smart home and automation of commercial buildings. So let me introduce Matter primary features. 
So what actually is matter? Matter aims to be the foundation for connected things. Matter, which was formerly known as Project Connected Home over IP or Project Chip, is an application layer standard unifying the smart home industry. Matter simplifies development for manufacturers and increases compatibility for consumers. When enabled with Matter, your new smart home device will work with other devices built on this industry unifying technology, including voice-enabled assistants, straight out of the box. So who is behind Matter? Matter development is guided by the Connectivity Standards Alliance, which was formerly known as Zigbee Alliance. Zigbee Alliance has been established in year 2002 and for many years was focusing on Zigbee protocol and derivative technologies. Recently, the Alliance evolved and transformed into an organization governing universal open standards for IoT industry. Some founding partners of Matter include Apple, Amazon, Google, and Samsung, but currently more than 2,000 experts from now over 200 companies have joined Matter Working Group in Connectivity Standards Alliance to help make the project a reality. Matter Charter is to define, develop, and deliver a comprehensive application layer and a data model which enable communication and interoperability across smart home devices, commercial buildings, and mobile applications. You can immediately notice that Matter is not a full stack like Zigbee or Bluetooth Mesh but an application layer running on top of other connectivity technologies. The development approach is, uh, when possible and in line with project goals, to reuse contributions from market-proven technologies from, mar from major device makers and ecosystems. As a consequence, Matter, for example, inherits data model from Zigbee application layer called Zigbee Cluster Library. Uh, but what is a data model? A data model organizes elements of data and standardizes how they relate to one another and to the properties of real world entities. For instance, uh, a data model may specify the data element <coughs> representing a light bulb, which is composed of a number of other elements which represent the light color, light brightness, etc. The project has an open source approach uh, with an SDK built and supported by large development community. Matter is built on market-proven technologies using Internet Protocol version 6, or in short, IPv6, on a network layer, and then UDP and TCP on transport layer. At launch, Matter will run on top of FRED, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet, and possibly on top of other IP-capable transport in future. So another observation you can make at this point. Zigbee or Bluetooth Mesh do not support IP, so they are not in scope of matter. Bluetooth Low Energy is a special case, which will be discussed in more detail shortly. Matter uses modern, widely used security practices and protocols. The project is open sourced for the development community for transparency and to identify and commit patches. Matter's security architecture is based on best practices, such as security by design or zero trust. 
every matter device joining the network is authenticated. Matter also uses proven and standard cryptographic algorithms, and every message is protected with strong AES based encryption. Matter also requires support for secured over the air upgrade for every Matter device. And finally, Matter is extend extendable to cloud but cloud connectivity is optional. The basic assumption is local connectivity still works even if internet is down in a house. So what is the role of Bluetooth low energy in matter? One of the basic architecture principles in matter is that Bluetooth low energy is only used to commission a new device into the network uh, using a matter controller, uh, for example, a mobile device or a, a home hub, like a smart speaker, smart display, etc. Commissioning uh, is a process of transferring network credentials and other necessary information to a new device so it can join uh, an existing matter network. So Let's look into the diagram on, on the right. Uh, we have a, a mobile device like a smartphone, which communicates over Wi-Fi to a, a Wi-Fi access point, which then communicates over Wi-Fi to a home hub, in this case, a smart display. And then we have a smart dog lock, which communicates over Bluetooth low energy with a mobile device. So a mobile device can transfer network credentials and other information to this new device, which wants to join a network. But then when a commissioning process is finalized, Bluetooth low energy is not, is not used anymore. The basic principle in matter is that Bluetooth low energy is not used for a device to device communication or a device to controller communication after commissioning is finalized. So again, on the diagram to the right, we see network topology after the commissioning process is finalized. Uh, the smart door lock communicates with a home hub over thread interface, and it is still possible to communicate from a matter controller running on a mobile device because a mobile device is connected over Wi Fi to a Wi Fi access point, which uh, then in turn communicates over Wi Fi to, to a, a home hub which also acts as a thread border router, which I will introduce just in a minute. So what is a, a basic matter topology for wireless connectivity protocols? Matter version 1.0 targets Wi-Fi and thread as main wireless connectivity protocols. Thread and Wi-Fi are complementary connectivity technologies for smart home. Thread <coughs> uh, is usually used for battery operated devices, uh, which require the highest energy efficiency, like sensors or door locks. So you can run them for uh, several years, even on a coin cell battery or a triple A AAA battery. Fred is also used for simple mains powered actuators like uh, smart plugs or light bulbs. Wi Fi is used for devices having a larger energy budget, so some battery larger than uh, a coin cell battery or larger than AAA battery, or for devices requiring uh, higher bandwidth 
like home appliances, security cameras, or video doorbells. So let me now introduce in more details what is threat networking protocol, which is one of the underlying technologies for Matter. Threat is secure wireless mesh network uh, for connected products in homes and commercial buildings. Uh, Fred was built on proven technologies. Fred runs on existing 802.15.4 silicon, which is the same radio, the same physical layer as used for Zigbee networking protocol. 802.15.4 provides reliable message transmission between individual Fred devices at the link level. FRED brings the Internet to the Internet of Things uh, by using the Internet's proven open standards to create an Internet Protocol version 6 or IPv6 based mesh network. Um, this is something unique uh, for FRED because uh, in, in other open mesh technologies like uh, Bluetooth Mesh or Zigbee, IPv6 is not used. Six low PAM defines encapsulation and header compression mechanisms that allow IPv6 packets to be sent and received over 802.15.4 based networks. FRED uh, uses a legacy free design with updated architecture. All devices in FRED network have to be authenticated before they are allowed to attach to a network. Additionally, all FRED communication are encrypted and authenticated using 802.15.4 security mechanisms. FRED supports hundreds or even thousands of products per network and was designed for low power operation. Let me then introduce FRED device types and roles. There are two types of uh, FRED devices defined by the specification. The full FRED device, FTD, and the minimal FRED device, MTD. Uh, the FTD is the most uh, versatile in the roles um, that it can play in a FRED network and takes more autonomous role but as a consequence requires more hardware resources and usually is a mains powered device. Uh, the minimal thread device or MTD has the lowest requirements on the device hardware, for example, memory size, and may sleep to preserve energy. Uh, so it is often a battery powered device, but as a consequence may only perform certain roles and takes an affiliate role relaying on its parent. So let's uh, look together into FRED topology and FRED roles. Uh, FRED is a scalable multi-hop mesh network. Each FRED device operates as a router or as an end device. Minimal FRED devices can only operate as end devices. And end device communicate only through its parent router and cannot forward messages for other devices. Some end devices can disable their transceiver to reduce power. Uh, often uh, end devices are, are battery powered and they are something like a door lock, a light switch, or an occupancy sensor. An end device attaches to exactly one router. Full thread devices can operate as an end devices or routers. A thread router provides routing services to thread devices in the network. Routers also provide joining and security services for devices trying to join the network. Thread self 
selects routers dynamically from router eligible and devices reads. All thread devices in initially attach as end devices. When additional range is needed, the thread network manages reads becoming routers without user interaction. For example, this happens when a joining device is beyond reach of a router, but in a reach of a router eligible end device. On the other hand, when connectivity is redundant or unnecessary, a router will downgrade itself to an end device. For example, this may happen when a router connects only few or no end devices. Routers and uh, router eligible end devices are not designed to sleep and uh, are mostly mains connected. They can be something like a, a smart uh, plug or a light bulb. This dynamic, this dynamic approach for routers differentiate thread from Zigbee or Bluetooth mesh where router role is statically assigned. Fred dynamically elects a leader out of a set of active routers. There is exactly one leader in a thread network at all times. To ensure no single point of failure, Fred requires that all routers are capable of performing a leader role. If the leader of a thread network fails, another router will be dynamically selected to resume the role. Thread is also resilient in maintaining connectivity to non-thread devices. A thread border router is a role of a thread device that provides end-to-end -end IP connectivity from the thread network to adjacent uh, networks on other physical layers. For example, an uh, a connectivity from thread interface into Wi-Fi interface or from thread interface into the Ethernet interface. Many other technologies rely on a single hub for external connectivity, mainly because they require protocol translation and maintaining a state in an application gateway. To ensure no single point of failure, uh, FRED supports multiple border routers operating simultaneously, providing multiple redundant paths into and out of a network. Example border routers are uh, Apple's HomePod Mini, Apple TV 4K, or Google Nest Hub second generation. Because uh, thread devices are based on IPv6, they seamlessly integrate with larger IP networks. It is an uh, um, important principle that FRED protocol is application layer agnostic and does not define an application layer itself. So to create a full featured product, a designer usually puts an IP enabled application layer on top of a FRED stack. So as you can notice again, FRED is uh, more similar to Wi-Fi, which also doesn't define an application layer, than to other mesh protocols like Bluetooth Mesh or Zigbee, which define an application layer and data model, so Bluetooth Mesh models and Zigbee cluster library. Okay. So what is OpenFRED and Nordic involvement in OpenFRED? OpenFRED was released by Google and is an open source implementation of FRED networking protocol and other necessary components. Uh, Nordic joined OpenFRED project from the beginning of its public existence in 2016. We provide full support for our devices within OpenFRED project 
We actively participate into the project. We are co-authors of some of the core modules of this project, and we integrate OpenThread into our SDKs. OpenThread is licensed under Free, free Close BSD license and is also an open source community-based project hosted on GitHub. If you are interested in more details about FRED, please familiarize yourself with Nordic technical webinars, which are Internet for FRED. We have a, a webinar which introduces you uh, in more details to FRED networking protocol and also a webinar focused on development titled Developing FRED Products with NRF Connect SDK. Now, when we know what is FRED networking protocol, let me, introduce you, let me introduce you some matter details. Matter targets the most popular device categories for smart home. It is planned to support devices in lightning electrical category like uh, light bulbs, smart plugs, etc., in blinds, shades category, in HVAC controls category, like for example thermostats, uh, TVs, access control category, so for example smart door locks, uh, garage door openers, and so on, in safety and security category. So occupancy sensors, door window sensors, smoke detectors, in access points, in bridges category, uh, which also may overlap with uh, matter controllers category, but can be implemented in a variety of devices and interfaces. So a matter controller can run on a mobile device, on a smart speaker, or for example, on a smart display. Multi-admin is a fa foundational feature in Matter. With multi-admin, user can connect Matter devices to multiple apps and ecosystems locally, securely, and even simultaneously. Users of a smart home may have more than one preferred mobile app or ecosystem. Family members may have different brand preferences for their home hubs or other control devices. They may want to share only specific devices with people in their household on, or with visitors. Today, sharing a smart home devices between multiple ecosystems is impossible or difficult. Matter solves it with multi-admin feature. Multi-admin lets users connect devices to any Matter supporting ecosystem they want. Whether it's a single product developers app or uh, multiple smart home platforms. User can control which devices they share with which systems on individual level and can easily add multiple devices to a new ecosystem to try out new experiences. So, the diagram on the right shows a, a Wi-Fi access point and a, a smart speaker and smart display, which, which have different ecosystems for, from different ecosystems providers. And even though all smart home devices are already connected over thread to, to a smart display featuring ecosystem A, 
a user can logically add some of his devices or even all of his devices to a smart, smart speaker which features ecosystem B. Another important aspect is bridging non-matter IoT devices. So today there is a, a variety of different smart home ecosystems using different connectivity protocols. But millions of these devices are already deployed in user homes. A bridge serves to allow the use of non-matter IoT devices, for example, devices running a Zigbee network, to communicate and interact with uh, matter devices. Uh, this enables the consumer to keep using existing non-matter devices together with their matter devices. A slight drawback of this solution is that, as you see on this diagram, you really have like two parallel mesh network here. Uh, so even though a user adds new thread devices into a home, they cre create uh, a parallel mesh network and the existing Zigbee devices do not extend reach of a matter-based network. An ambition of matter project is far beyond providing only a specification. So specification is uh, just one delivery, but together with creating a specification, the project members in parallel also work on open source implementation, which is available on GitHub. This implementation is platform independent. Uh, there is a porting for POSIX platforms like Linux and for embedded platforms from IC vendors like Nordic. Uh, the project also includes some reference example applications like a door lock or a light bulb, and also provides a mobile app reference, both for Android and iOS. Another important aspect of a matter project is certification program. So it is planned to deliver test specification, certification program, uh, and a certification framework, which will be used by certification labs. When it comes to schedule of the project, uh, the initial technical specification was delivered to members in the first half of 2021. And also initial SDK and test events effort started at around the same time. In the second half of 2021, Connectivity Standard Alliance plans to provide a, a initial technical specification to members for, for pre-balloting purposes. So it means that it is expected to have a um, complete specification, which can be then judged but by, uh, by project members before they vote if, if the specification um, should be uh, transferred to version 1.0. There is also an on ongoing SDK and certification program effort and test events continue 
throughout the second half of this year. In the first half of 2022, a production release of Matter SDK is expected. Um, it is expected that a certification program will be released and most likely at, at the end of the first half of next year, we can see some first Matter certified products. And finally, what is a Nordic role in Matter? Uh, we as Nordic take an active role in Connectivity Standards Alliance and in Matter development. We participate in all sub-working groups, so technical marketing and certification, and in some subcommittees within uh, those groups. We integrate Matter with our software platform called NRF Connect DK. We cooperate with other companies to develop Matter implementation and exa example applications. We actively participate in all test events from test event number one. Uh, those test events are organized uh, by Matter Certification Working Subgroup. And we also collaborate with major providers of ecosystems based on Matter. So speaking about committed ecosystems, uh, let's uh, look together what's the uh, situation on this front. Uh, during Google I.O. 2021 conference, uh, Google officially committed to support Matter in their ecosystem, and they provided a, a list of device which are planned to be upgraded to support Matter. Uh, currently, access to beta firmware enabling Matter support in Google Home Hubs is limited to some selected partners. Also, Apple committed to Matter uh, during WWDC 2021 conference. Apple officially committed to support Matter in their ecosystem. Uh, during the same conference, they released a developer preview of Matter in iPhone and for iPhone and iPad and Apple TV. Uh, this is available to anyone with an Apple development account, but today the support is limited to Matter over Wi-Fi. Uh, but we hope that support for Fred is coming soon. Also, during Alexa Live 2021 keynote uh, presentation, Amazon officially committed to support Matter in their ecosystem, and they also provided a list of devices they plan to upgrade to support Matter when it is finalized. So how you can build a Matter device using Nordic hardware and Nordic software. NRF Connect SDK combines all wireless support with low-level drivers and middleware for all Nordic wireless devices. NRF Connect SDK targets NRF 52 family, NRF 53 family, and NRF 91 family for cellular. It is one integrated SDK, one code base, which is common for all our technologies. It includes support for Bluetooth Low Energy, for Bluetooth Mesh, for Fred and Fred based application layers like HomeKit and Matter, for Zigbee and for cellular technologies like LTM, NB-IoT, and GPS. It is based on Zephyr Artos, which is, based, which is governed by Linux Foundation, but it is much more than Zephyr Artos itself. It adds some unique functionalities on top of Zephyr Artos. It pre-integrates everything for you, it also adds continuous integration to 
ensure the right quality. NRF Connect SDK is not only great software, but also powerful standard toolchain for configuration, build, and source management. Nordic provides toolchain manager, which installs the full toolchain that you need to work with the NRF Connect SDK. West Tool helps you to manage multiple repositories because NRF Connect SDK is just a, a set of GitHub repositories. Then Kconfig Tool is a source module feature configuration tool. Using this tool, out of one code base, you can create several, several applications just by the right configuration. And then Device Tree is a tool used to configure an application for a target board. Using this tool, you can build multiple applications for multiple boards from one code base without porting or changing any program code. To build a matter device, the right architecture is a single chip multi protocol architecture. This single chip solution supports simultaneously 802.15.4 and Bluetooth low energy operations. Using this architecture, a single chip runs a user application, matter application layer, thread and Bluetooth LE stacks, and everything else what you need to build a full-featured matter device. This architecture is low cost and allows you to achieve low power and consumption. NRF Connect SDK is Nordic default software platform for matter. NRF Connect SDK integrates open thread and provide support for pre-compiled libraries. So you can use thread certification by inheritance. It also features certified Bluetooth LE protocol stack and support multiple multi-protocol operation of thread and Bluetooth low energy, which is needed to support matter device commissioning. There is also support for commissioning with an FC tag, which is a, a useful optional method to, to initiate uh, matter commissioning. And we provide also other necessary components like uh, components for security, bootloaders, OTA, DAVU, drivers, generic libraries, and so on. NRF Connect SDK provides a complete support for developing a, a matter device. A part of this solution is a comprehensive user guide about configuring matter development environment. This user guide uh, shows and or describes how to run a matter accessory on a Nordic development kit what are types of matter controllers and how to set up them together with a thread border router. Uh, we also provide a set of uh, samples and applications. There is a matter template which you can use as a starting point for your application. Uh, there is a matter door lock sample, matter light switch sample, and matter light bulb sample. And we also have like a complete matter weather station application, which provides all the necessary components to build a full-fledged thread device and which we used during matter test events. 
an, of, an official technical support for Matter is available through Nordic's DevZone portal. When it comes to Nordic hardware suitable for building a Matter device, as mentioned previously, a Matter over Thread device must support Thread and Bluetooth LE concurrently. Bluetooth is used for adding a new device to a network. It means uh, that the memory footprint of the solution, which combines Thread protocol stack, Bluetooth LE protocol stack, uh, the application layer itself, and then the user application on top, imposes SOC with flash larger than 512K and additionally an external flash memory for over-the-air over the device firmware upgrade. So we target two SOCs for Matter, NRF5340 and NRF52840. If you would like to learn more, on a development side, uh, we plan another webinar titled Developing Matter Products Using NRF Connect SDK, which will be provided in October 2021. Earlier in this presentation, I mentioned the thread border router role. A uh, thread border router connects a uh, thread network to other IP-based networks, such as Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And the uh, thread network requires a border router to connect to other networks. Uh, let, let, let me present you in more details what are options to provide thread border routing functionality. Thread and Wi-Fi are both IP-based connectivity standards. Both do not define an application layer. Relying an IP packet between Wi-Fi and Thread interfaces is a simple change of a transport. Result, result of this is that the most straightforward approach to provide a thread border router functionality is to add this functionality into a Wi-Fi access point. This is not often today, but hopefully we will see it in future when thread protocol gains popularity. Another approach is to add thread border router functionality into a home hub, like a smart speaker or a smart display. Ecosystem providers use this approach to enable thread for a smart home before it is part of Wi-Fi access points. This approach is realized in devices like Apple HomePod Mini or Google Nest Hub Max second generation. Yet another clever approach is to add thread border router functionality into a matter device. Some more complex matter devices like um, some thermostats can afford both wireless interfaces, thread and Wi-Fi, and can thus extend the reach of the thread network and serve as a thread border router. So finally, I would like to introduce Nordic hardware and software suitable for building a border router. Uh, there are two architectures intended for building a border router, a network coprocessor architecture and radio coprocessor architecture. In the network coprocessor architecture, thread stack runs on the Nordic device and an, uh, an external application host processor uh, and an application runs on an external host processor. 
uh, there is a clear logical separation between a uh, thread and an application. And this separation enables host to sleep. Uh, this architecture requires more expertise from a designer because a reference application for the host site does not exist as part of open thread project. For this architecture, we recommend two devices, NRF52840 and NRF52833. But you can also use uh, more sophisticated SOCs like uh, NRF5340. Another architecture is, uh, as mentioned, radio coprocessor architecture. In this architecture, thread stack and uh, an application run on an external host processor while the Nordic device runs only minimal controller. A consequence of this architecture is that has a host is not able to sleep. Uh, this is uh, probably a bit easier approach for, for designers because a reference application for the host exists as part of open thread project. Recommended devices for this architecture are NRF52811 and NRF52820, but you can also use any other more powerful SOC like uh, NRF52840, NRF52833, or NRF5340. Thank you for joining me today. You can Sign up for more webinars at webinars.nordicsemi.com. You can get technical support from us at devzone.nordicsemi.com. And you can find out more about our products and services at nordicsemi.com.